Good afternoon. I'm Ariana cohen Halberstam. I'm the Artistic Director of Boston Jewish Film. Welcome to our 32nd Annual Festival and to our discussion about the end of love. I want to thank our community partners, the French Consulate in Boston and the Israeli Consulate as well. Um, it is now with great pleasure that I introduce Karen ben Raphael, um, the filmmaker of today's film, who is joining us from Israel, where it's, as you can see, the middle of the night, or, or later, at least, it's dark there. No, it's not middle of the night. It's uh, 7.30 here. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Happy to be with you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. So this is such an interesting film to be watching in this period. Um, you know, I watched it right when lockdown was starting. Um, and since then, we've all gotten very used to communicating with family and with friends and loved ones through screens. Um, you shot this before this all started. Um, where did you come up with this idea for this film? And how did you decide to make the entire film uh, through these screens instead of through typical sort of filmmaking? Um, so the, the idea uh, came, it, it's, it's quite personal. It came from an um, experience that I lived I'm uh, Israeli and married to a French guy. And uh, in one period, uh, um, I mean, it happened to us a lot to be in different countries, as happens a lot when you are um, from two different cultures and, uh, and countries. And um, in one period, uh, I, we had our daughter. She was um, almost one year old. And I was stuck actually in France and my husband was in Israel. And um, and we were Skyping a lot. I think you Skype even more when you have a child because uh, you want to show. And um, this period showed me like it was really interesting. And I think the idea came there because I felt how when we end the conversations, we both of us stay with this kind of feeling of solitude. Um, and I think something interested me in this, uh, you know, difference between feeling really that you are together and then suddenly, poof, you know, you cut it off. And, uh, and um, it took some time for the idea to really like become um, this project. Um, and I think it's really was when we understood that it has a more like a global thing about couples today, because even before uh, the COVID and the lockdown and all that, Couples today, you know, we communicate a lot through uh, through screens, whatever it will be, even if it's not a uh, video calls, then it's, uh, you know, we send each other stuff and photos and that, a lot, everything passes through the screens. So I guess I knew that there is something um, that is worth investigating when I understood it has a more global thing about couples today. I think yeah. you do such a great job at, at building this increasing a feeling of isolation that you talk about. Um, we, the first scene, we, we don't even necessarily realize at first that they're not in the same room. Um, we were not aware of the screen. You didn't, you didn't build in the Skype, you know, logo on the bottom. Um, they have the same color bed sheets. We think that they're in bed together and then we see He's only in the next scene in the in the distance in the in the reflection in the mirror. Um, what were the challenges and sort of how did you work to using the same uh, medium of the of the screen work to build this feeling of isolation? And what were the challenges in doing that that were different from your other experiences in making film? Um. It's very different uh, to make the film like this. What was quite, um, I mean, it, 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 it was a challenge, but a very um, successful challenge, I'd say, in the sense that it was a challenge that pushed me to find, um, uh, you know, solutions. Because um, the idea to um, not to have, a, like not to show the computer, but to be, actually in the point of view of you know of the skype of the computer of the phone 
this is, this is where the camera is always. And this idea came um, almost from the beginning. So we were writing the film already like this. You know, you I mean, and it's so different because the first challenge is when you realize that you cannot, you know, you, you want to tell a story and you want the characters to be round enough, you know, and um, very, um, you want to tell stuff about their lives and their families and all this, but you cannot include everything since you are a, a, um, only showing from one point of view. You know, for example, Julie, she's all the time in her apartment. And how can you show something about her life outside? So already while writing, um, the challenge is uh, really interesting and, uh, and uh, it, yeah, it influenced from the beginning. And uh, later on, when we were filming, what was really important for us was that um, it, it was, we didn't want, you know, to show like the problems, the technical problems you can have on Skype you know, out of focus or, uh, I don't know. We wanted, on the contrary, I mean, to, to have it more cinematography, you know, more cinematic. Um, so we were looking on the one hand to have the shots, um, like that you can imagine that it's a computer shot, you know, that it's in the right uh, place. And, uh, but, um, you know, maybe to have some kind of uh, background or lights that are suddenly showing or mirrors. There are some play mm -hmm. with mirrors in the film. Stuff that can give you the feeling that maybe you can forget sometime you are in a video call and just feel like you're in a film. And in this sense, the first scene is a really good example because it's a... Um, when I was filming it, I knew I want, you know, to uh, bluff in a way. I want you to think that they are together. This is why, of course, uh, the right. same sheets and the same kind of way of lighting and all that. And um, and uh, so so it gives you this feeling that, that they are intimate, which a feeling that you can have when you Skype, by the way. You can feel very intimate when you're Skyping. And then, buff, no, actually... Uh, they're not together. Right. And, and, and we do, I mean, I think that that's why it works so well is that we do feel that intimacy in that first scene. And then um, we slowly sort of see it drifting away. And we're almost, you know, the first time he calls her and, and she's not there, I felt very disappointed and angry. And I'm curious because this is somewhat based on your own experience. And I, you know, maybe initially thought that, you, you know, I wonder if you're, who, which characters you felt closer to um, as an Israeli who was living in France, but also as a mother who had her husband living far away? Yeah, I think um, it's funny because the, the, I, I don't exactly know why, I, I do know why we inversed it, why I didn't do it like in our couple. But I guess it gave me something, um, it gave me a good um, position because in that way I can really understand both of them because I, I um, of course I can uh, relate to the Israeli and to his family, to this problem that we can have in Israel to have a family that is on the one hand really, you know, warm and uh, present and you know, like so, but on the other hand it can be a bit uh, too much, you know, a bit suffocating. And, um, and, uh, but of course, I really also identify with the woman and being a mother, even though this is, I, I don't have the same kind of, um, we don't have the roles in the same way in my own couple. Um, I mean, it's not so black and white that the woman is always uh, with the baby and the man can do what he wants. But, um, but of course, I can relate completely to um, to what it is also to have uh, children and to try to still, uh, you know, have a professional life and to also have a life life and uh, <laughs> how like, and it, it can be so hard, especially when the kids are are young and, um, and it, I think it's a question that I ask myself a lot, how to, you know, jungle, how, how can you deal with the whole thing together? So a lot of these questions, uh, as an Israeli and as um, 
mom and as a woman and as maybe um a, a, you know a filmmaker uh, all these questions are questions that I ask myself and that came had an echo in the film in one way or another yeah the the portraits of motherhood are really interesting in the film because his mother of course is the sort of overbearing but also very loving mother his sister also you know has is this hippie mother who has this idea that goat milk will cure all and but then her mother I think is a really interesting character because at first she seems so absent and then she has this breakdown at the birthday party and then of course um, when she leaves Lenny alone in the room we start to question her her role as a mother what were you can you talk a little bit about the mother characters here, particularly her mother. Um... Yeah, I think um, we really had this idea with the script writer that we were writing, when we were writing together, we really had this idea to um, to, to find uh, how to uh, speak about her, about Julie's um, fears uh, through uh, giving the idea of what her childhood uh, was and what she doesn't want to resemble to, you know, like the um, portrait of this mother, um, very lonely and also, you know, uh, that was not completely uh, a mother in a way farm. I mean, she was not as, as we expect anyway. Um, this is also, was also a way to, um, yeah, to, to show how what Julie doesn't want to become. And maybe also why Julie it takes her so long during the film to really kind of like, you know, scream it out and let it all go and just like say, fuck it, I'm doing what? Because I think for a very long time, she really tries to, um, you know, uh, to, to keep the family. And uh, also, the idea in his side is that um, it's, I mean, I think what she loves in him is the fact that he's a family guy. And it's something that uh, because she didn't have it, it's something that attracts her in him from the beginning. Um, but she didn't know uh, how much his own family is going to, um, how much he's going to miss his own family. Right. And uh, for him suddenly to uh, be with his family, um, I guess it questioned him on a, you know, on uh, on which family uh, should I put first, you know, the one that my original family, the one that I come from or the one that I create. And uh, I guess this is something that I feel that we ask a lot ourselves when we, um, you know, new parents. This is one of the questions that I think it, always um, like you have to find in the beginning, how do you, you know, how do you, yeah, you're constructing a new family and on what grounds do you do it? From which side do you take what, you know? And um, yeah, the, 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 the thing is of course that it is not black and white. Um, the, the Israeli family is of course much more a, but it's not all Israeli families are not like this and all French families are not like that. Um, but yeah, in our story, this was also a way to tell things about them and their, their past, their fears. And that's what I was saying earlier that we had to find when we were writing how to include all this inside in action as well, you know? It's amazing because you really do create these rich characters um even though we're we're only seeing them in some ways through these places where, where there's we, we're not able to leave their world um somebody asked a question here um what were what was your process in deciding which shots to take i think the choices were brilliant um and i think we can extend that a little bit also to what when they were outside when they were inside who's picking up the phone um were you shooting differently if they were speaking on a phone or speaking on a computer? Um, can you? Yeah, um, so the shots, I think first of all, having a really rich experience of Skyping myself 
um, like really from real life. I had a lot of shots that um, I, I was um, imagining. And as I said before, we wanted it to be quite cinematic, but also to give ourselves the possibility to um, film shots that you don't usually see in cinema, like, uh, you know, a shot, uh, like the shot of Julie uh, on the window when the camera is under her. Um, or, you know, some of these shots that you usually don't see when you, uh, in, in normal classic cinematic um, language. Um, and, uh, oh, okay, now I forgot the, the, the second um, thing you asked me, what was that? Well, I mean, is the, was the framing different depending on whether they were picking up on a cell phone or where they were and what shots you chose to include? I think that shot with the window is, is such an, an incredible shot because it really instills a lot of fear. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, there's a moment of, is he right? Is, is Lenny able to reach the window? Um, how did you use those shots to build drama in the film? Um, yeah, the window is something that I think we uh, kind of had as a light motif throughout the whole film, because you can see it open from the beginning and he's saying something. And then later on, you can see her smoking and uh, this shot that I talk about when the camera mm -hmm. is under. And of course, arriving to this final shot um, with the mobile, uh, the baby mobile uh, thing. Um, and this, I think um, it was, I think what was uh, really interesting is how to kind of pick this shot um, and uh, and um, play with the. We did not want it to be too much, you know, um, uh, but play it with, in the editing as well. You know, what was really interesting in this film in the editing is that we're actually only having uh, one shot. We only deal with one shot in the film, actually, uh, which is, uh, by the way, also for the actors, um, really interesting uh, because they can act, you know, usually when you shoot in cinema, uh, okay, you will have one short shot close up and, and another short shot here. And, and here they had time, you know, to kind of like really act out the scene uh, which I think was also really interesting for it to become um, more natural, you know, it's a, uh, and, um, and in the editing, um, choosing which shots to take and to put one next to another um, and how to create this kind of language uh, that is uh, really based on cinema language, but it is different as well. Uh, when you understand, when you tell yourself that actually people today that are going to watch this film, they already know what is cinematic language by heart. And they already know what is Zoom and what is Skype. So we all have this as in our history, in our mind. So it gives you the possibility to play more with stuff and not to be like uh, too much... Um, uh, clear about everything because you know that the, the, the viewer can kind of like understand stuff. That, um, that ties interestingly to, to the next question from our audience, which is, have you noticed a difference in the response to the film from audiences since the pandemic? Yeah. When we're so used to this language. Yeah, completely. Um, it, it was amazing because the film had to go out in theaters in France in April, and we started to have reactions and stuff, but it was, uh, of course, it didn't go out because of the lockdown, uh, but it was shown in uh, festivals before and stuff like that. It got good um, critics, but we really felt the difference when uh, the film uh, hit the cinemas in France in, September's, in September, and people were really, um, you know, welcoming it, you felt that they can really ident identify and uh, and people were speaking about their own experiences in the Q&As that we had afterwards, like people were, and, and it was funny because I think one of the differences is that before, um, before the pandemic, I think young people 
uh, know this already, okay? They know this form of communication, but it is the older people that after the pandemic, they also have now this experience of uh, Skyping with the grandchildren or children or friends, you know? And uh, it became much broader, I think. Now everyone, no, almost everyone knows what it is. So it was a funny uh, coincidence that uh, for the film was quite a good coincidence, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I was wondering if you had shot it after the pandemic, if it would be Zoom instead of Skype, but... Uh, but yeah, but they just said, I didn't want actually to say anything, but you ha we had to in one moment say something because, you know, but... Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite happy that it doesn't have graphical elements of any of these things. And then you can just, uh, it, it, that is why it becomes something else in one moment. You start from the Zoom or Skype or whatever, but the film goes elsewhere in a way. Absolutely. I'm just curious, when you were shooting, was because it's, they, the actors were isolated, um, were, were they both, were they ever in a room together? And how, how did you actually shoot the scenes. Yeah, it was a complicated uh, task, let's say, to understand how to do it. Um, what, uh, because in fact, yeah, the only shots that they are really together is the last shot of the film. All the rest of the time, they're never really together. And of course we wanted them to be together. Um, so what happened was that we uh, found a way to um, um, create uh, the Israeli room of Yuval, only the room where his room in Israel, and uh, we created inside the French apartment. Mm. So in that way, uh, we started to shoot uh, that. That was the beginning of our uh, of our uh, shooting, and in that way, I could give the actors and me as well a few days of um, of shooting together in some way because we had two cameras and. Um, each one of them had a small um, screen and, um, and an ear, uh, earphone, how do you say? Earpiece, yeah. yeah. Ear, earpiece. Um, so it was kind of like imitating the Skype uh, mm. system. Of course, they could not, it was more complicated than that because they could not really look at each other all the time because there is stories of where to look. And so it was more complicated than that, but still it gave them um, a, a really, a real connection, you know, uh, and that was really important. So it was not all of the shooting, but it was really important as the beginning of the connection. Uh, the funny thing is that um, actually the first time I, I saw uh, these two actors together, uh, it was by uh, Skype or Zoom or whatever. Um, since I was in Tel Aviv and she was in France and he's uh, Bel Bel Belgium. So he oh, was okay. in Brussels. Yeah. Um, and um, so we were, yeah, so the, we were all meeting like that. It was the kind of like, not audition, but you know, when you try out to see if it mm -hmm. works together. And, you know, each one of them was in their own home. home and uh, it was intimate immediately. You know, you could see like his kitchen, her living room, whatever. And it's like, it's like they put each other in their intimacy immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was interesting is that from there, there on, um, they, uh, they, it, it never worked when they were really one in front of the other. It worked when they had the screen separating. I mean, if we try when we rehearsed, if we try to do the scene just like that, when we were just sitting, the three of us and rehearsing, it, it, it didn't really work well. And then, you know, when we were rehearsing, we just take some phones and each one in another room and okay, suddenly the magic is there again. It's like they needed the screen. That's so interesting. And the, the distance um, to make it work, you know? Uh, it was it was really yeah it was uh, strange and and even the first scene you know I um, in one moment I wanted to uh, shoot them um, I thought maybe it will be easier if they will be in the same bed and we shoot it like that and it didn't work hmm. I they really needed to be in different spaces uh, 
Yeah. That's fascinating. And there, there have been so many articles about how we're going to lose our ability to communicate with people in person after this. So that's a little frightening. Yeah. Um, there's a <laughs> there's a question here from Amy. Can you talk about the ending? And of course, you end the film with the beginning. So um, which is a really interesting choice. Yeah, I think I might have kind of a flavor. I, I might like ending films in a way that you cannot that you have to kind of like tell, decide where the film is going, you know, that I leave uh, the audience a little bit of, um, you know, of work in a way to do. Um, so the ending, I think um, that the, the thing is that I wanted on the one hand, I, I didn't want to end with the end of the relationship. Um, and I guess in a way, um, it's funny because the film is called The End of Love. But for me, I was not even sure that this couple will not come back together, even after all this. Um, I mean, I, I have the tendency to think that in couples, we can pass really hard stuff and say horrible stuff to each other and still, you know, okay. Especially when there's a child, by the way. So, um, I think uh, going, putting this um, uh, flashback scene in the end is also a way of kind of like opening the film to something with more hope. And maybe even though it's not what we're, we're saying in these scenes, it can give you the impression that they might go back together because it ends on a note of love and not on a note of kind of like she cuts the sky. Another thing, of course, is that I really wanted to uh, cut uh, the Skype language. I wanted to get out of this um, claustrophobic, uh, um, you know, screen uh, uh, communication and, and to have a real life or a real cinema scene in the end uh, with other lights, with colors, you know, something that is much more, um, yeah, cinematic and bigger their life like uh, memories are. Mm -hmm. um, and what is very funny is that in France, um, the distributor uh, was not, um, he didn't want the film to go on the English title, The End of Love, because apparently it's not good for a French film to have an English title. Mm -hmm. And um, La fin de l'amour, which is the translation, normal translation, we thought it's not a good idea. So actually the film has another name, another title, um, A Coeur Baton, which means like um, a heart beating, something like that. Something much more um, positive. And it's really interesting to see how you read the film differently uh, when you have this, you know, when do you start? Because uh, for me, the end of love was also the, of course, Leonard Cohen's song as well. Mm -hmm. so it, it's funny because people in France, when they came with another title, they just, I guess, um, read it otherwise. And uh, it was, yeah, it was interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the, the, did they interpret the ending differently, do you think, than other audiences because of that? I, I mean, I guess I think no, because the thing is that in the end of the film, uh, sorry, there is a, in the end of the film, um, it's written the end of love in English. Mm. So a lot of questions I used to have in France were like, okay, so in France <laughs> it's called this, in English it's called this. And, but I think it's the same thing in the end, because I think the feeling that you have what I, what I felt from other people, from the Q&As in festivals uh, and in France and outside France is that the feeling of the ending really depends on you in a way. If you feel like taking it to a place, a um, more positive place, uh, you know, about love and that it's everything you can always, and you feel like that these two will go back together, you can see it that way. And and there are even people that didn't understand that it was a flashback and mm -hmm. that thought that they are meeting in the future, which is fine as well, you know? I mean, I guess it's not, um, I guess in, in some way I wanted to leave it like that. 
you know, this possibility. Yeah. Well, it has it shown in Israel as well? It is shown, but not much. It is only shown in one festival. Um, and it was supposed to start its life in the beginning of, uh, like in March. Mm. It was supposed to be in the French um, festival here and then to have kind of not a very big, uh, but uh, still to go in cinematex and stuff like that. And it was uh, stopped. And now we're still, you know, cinemas didn't open here yet. So we're still thinking how to do it. Well, it, it is one that's sort of an interesting one to watch from home um, in, this, in this virtual platform. There's one last question from, from the audience, from Mary. The actors are great. How did you go about casting? And, and it was fun to see um, Judith Travella, who was in um, a film that we showed here last year, uh, My yeah. Polish Honeymoon. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, they are really good actors and I think I had a, a lot of luck with them. And what was really interesting in the casting um, <clears throat> uh, was actually more than Judith, what was really interesting was the, the role of Arye because I was actually looking for an Israeli that speak French and uh, there are not much in this, not in this age range and not in general, you know, Israelis don't, are not uh, French speakers, not most of them. And then someone told me about this actor that I have seen in a film called Girl, a film, a Belgian film that had a very big success and he's, act, he's playing the role of the father in this film. And someone told me, listen, you speak Hebrew and I was like, no way. And, and uh, it was amazing. So the story is this guy, he's <clears throat> Jewish and he went to uh, Jewish schools but he's really from uh, you know he, he didn't live in Israel he knows Israel he was here um, and his grandfather uh, that was born in Israel and then went to uh, live all his life in uh, Belgium uh, he came back to Israel a few years ago they live uh, not far from me his grandparents and he is the guy that uh, plays his grandfather in the film Wow. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so, um, and what was really interesting when working with Arya is that, you know, he had to kind of create an accent for the film because his normal accent is a Belgian accent, which is very strong. He can, he can do very easily to change accents. In the beginning, he came with an um, Israeli accent in French too strong and it changed the character it became like a macho violent guy mm. and it was really interesting because with him when we were working on his character um we hardly spoke about the character we spoke about the accent all the time it was like either stronger or less strong and it was really and uh, yes you did it was um it was one of the first ideas that we had and we were lucky enough that it worked and i think she has this um i was really looking for someone that has a the capacity of um you know filling up the frame because she's really all the time alone sometime with the baby which is a great casting as well i think by the way <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, but she's all the time, she has to kind of fill up the void, you know, it's, it's hard to, um, to do that. And uh, this actress has this capacity of being, uh, you always feel like she's thinking, she has a lot of stuff in her head and you feel like she's really down to earth. And in the same time, she's kind of flying somewhere, you know, she has this very, um, maybe something a bit fantasy. I don't know, she has this thing that is uh, really interesting, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, I was, I'm was. i surprised that he wasn't Israeli and and, um, and I, I don't speak French, but I, it's interesting to hear that he had to do an Israeli accent on French and, and she's great. I think she, it, she also plays a mother to a young child in uh, Polish, in my Polish honeymoon and, um, and has the same sort of character um, characteristics there that you talk about. I think she's really wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah, she's a very good actress. Well, thank you so much for joining us 
today and and for sharing your film with us. It's um, it's one that I would have loved to show with it with a larger you know in a in a theater, but I think it's one that that really poses a lot to think about in this time. So it's really great to be sharing it in our first virtual festival, um, and we look forward to seeing whatever it is that you do next. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Really happy to be with you even if it's only by Zoom, but it's a way as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed, as we've seen in your film. So uh, thank you everyone for being here today and we will see you hopefully tonight at our Midfest event. And we have two Q and A's tomorrow afternoon and we hope to see you there. Have a good afternoon. Have a good night, Karen. Goodbye. Bye.